In this video I'm going to show you how I use ZBrush Blender and Photoshop to turn this awesome 2D drawing by Raquel Triv, who you'll find linked in the description, into this 3D model which you'll notice isn't a direct translation because this was a draw this in your style challenge. But before we get into it, I want a word with you. The most common question I get asked about sculpting is, what software do you use? And the second most common question I get is, why don't you use Blender or 3D Core instead? And I see these questions everywhere, and as any sculptor that's worth their salt will tell you, if you're at the level where you're asking these questions, then it's not the software you want to be giving your attention to. It's the art, the shapes, the proportions, the fundamentals. Now think about it, if you've got a good understanding of the shape you're trying to recreate, then you're going to be able to do it in either ZBrush or Blender because they're both capable in their own ways. And if you don't have a good understanding of the shape you're trying to recreate, then you're going to fail either way. This is why I've created Next Level Base Meshes, a series of shapes designed to get your sculpts to the next level regardless of the software you decide to use. The idea is to try and recreate these increasingly difficult shapes in sequence, checking your progress as you go. Now, doing so will help train your brain to see the shapes and shift your attention away from the tools, which you can worry about later. Alternatively, you can just grab the final mesh, which is retopologize, and use it for your project. It's up to you. The Blender and ZBrush files are ready to go out the box and all the OBJ files are available for alternative sculpting packages, along with 26 reference images for each level, totaling 234 reference images. You'll find details on where to buy the next level base meshes in the description below and you can expect to see some tutorials on how to use them uh, on my YouTube channel soon, but for now, good luck on getting to the next level. I start the head by finding our first shape using the move brush to pull the mesh and trim dynamic to play in the sides of the head. Now this key shape is level 1 completed already and represents the cranial mass with a wedge attached. I use control to mask out an area for the neck and pull it out with my gizmo tool. I use my insert mesh brush for this basic ear shape and you'll find a tutorial on how to make your own link below. Now if you're observant, you might have realised that the ears aren't present in the final image, so why bother? Well, without them the head looks very strange and it becomes difficult to judge proportions properly, so it's a good idea to at least create some basic shapes. I took this as an opportunity to sculpt some semi-realistic ears, since I don't practice them enough. Happy with my second shape, I begin looking for the necks by roughing out the chin, cheekbones and sides of the head. I then move on to the eye sockets using clay build up holding alt to carve away. I also make space for the other facial features too. I like to take things nice and slow here since this is the foundation of our face and while ZBrush is very good at making big changes even during the final stages of the sculpt, if you take your time to make these early shapes look good, the sculpt will go a whole lot smoother. For the upper torso, I add a sphere which I immediately convert to DynaMesh at a very low resolution. For the lower torso, I duplicate the sphere and rotate it in position. I then use the move brush to mould the spheres into a simplified shape of the torso. Then I merge the objects and dynamesh them together to create a single solid shape. Using clip curve, I cut away the areas where the arms and legs insert into the torso and make improvements to the shape. Let's get back to the head. At this stage, I start to establish some plane changes. Now like I said, I'm progressing really slowly here, referencing human anatomy on another screen. I'm not actually referencing the concept for proportions on this occasion because this is a draw this in your style piece and for these I try to assimilate ideas from some of my favourite artists such as Giselle Ucardi or Sayerin. Notice that I occasionally push the model away so that it's quite small on the screen. Now this is a bit like stepping away from the model and is good for checking the overall proportions and silhouette. I start pushing the anatomy a little more, but again I'm progressing really slowly and jumping around the model to avoid getting bogged down in any one area. I try to get a feel for the skull shape underneath the skin before pushing the features too much. Jumping back to the torso, I check the proportions and silhouette. Then I rough out some features such as the ribcage, pelvis and clavicles, and some softer forms too. On the nose I begin roughing out some secondary planes and making room for the nostrils. I don't specifically aim for a nose type at this point, I'm just thinking about getting the planes in the right place. I can worry about the more nuanced characteristics later. I begin the mouth by using damn standard to mark the centerline and underneath the bottom lip. 
Then I use clear buildup to begin finding the forms of the lips. When you're making lips, try to avoid making them too flat. Check there's a curvature to them from underneath because lips wrap around the teeth. Again, I begin making marks on the head to avoid losing the skull underneath before making space for some eyeballs. For the eyeballs themselves, I just add in some simple spheres and position them in the eye sockets. Now, since this isn't a realistic head, I work from the size of the eye sockets to estimate how big the eyeballs ought to be, but there's a certain amount of intuition involved here. Something that helps find the scale is adding an iris to the eyeball, which generally takes up approximately half the diameter. Now I'll spend some time working on the shapes I have laid down. And once I get to this stage where the sculpt is starting to get somewhere but it's looking a bit weird, this is the point I usually decide to retopologize because the low res mesh gives me a lot of control over the overall forms. However, this time I decided against doing it from scratch and instead used a plugin called ZRap. Now I'll say right away that you do have to pay for this plugin and I'm not being paid to say this, but this is a super useful tool. Basically, what you do is load in a head that's already retopologized, which is the blue one here. Then you specify points on each mesh that correspond with each other. Once you're done, you hit the wrap button and the software does its best to wrap the good topology around the dynamest topology. And just like that, we have a retopologized head. As I did in the last video, I create the eyelash shapes by duplicating the entire head and deleting everything but this strip of polygons. Then I use the Z Modeler tools to extrude it for thickness and add supporting edge loops. I create the eyebrows in much the same way because we might as well put the topology we have to good use. Now usually I create hair strands in Blender but this was no usual hairstyle and took a lot of trial and error before I started to get somewhere. I started with a cube and used the bend curve transformation to find the first hair shape. Then I used the move brush to start refining the shape. To create the primary hair mass, I masked an area on the head and extracted it. It's probably worth mentioning that the concept I'm using was actually one of four, and I was drawing more reference from this one at this point. Now because this hairstyle is so complicated, you'll see me dipping in and out of it during the rest of the piece to avoid overwhelming my fragile brain. For the choker, once again, I duplicated the head and made use of the topology that was already there. And for the shoulders, I initialized a Q cube and kept it really low poly to find the basic shape I need. I then subdivide it and refine the shape a bit more. For the arms, I add a Z sphere and position them with a slight bend like so. Now, as with the ear, the arms are mostly unseen, but they do help to find proportions and I could do with the practice. Now I find it really hard to sculpt the forearm without a hand in place, but I don't really want to make one from scratch, especially when it won't be in the final piece, so I import one from another model. And for the breast, I add two spheres and call it a day because it annoys people on Twitter. But then I grow up and create more of a teardrop shape like so. It's worth remembering that the breasts sit over the pecs and the pecs insert underneath the shoulder, creating the front of the armpit. As with the head, when I'm sculpting the body, I like to over-exaggerate the planes to better understand the forms. And you'll notice that I gradually smooth these out as I work the sculpt. To start the top, I masked an area of the chest and extracted it. I didn't start by duplicating the body this time because the chest topology isn't appropriate for the clothing. I figure now is as good a time as any to polypaint some proxy eyes, but I avoid painting anything on the skin for a while. And the reason is that polypaint can trick your eyes into thinking a shape is a certain way when it isn't, so it's best to leave it until the end, though you can always turn polypaint off in the subtool menu too. Here I'm preparing the mesh for some very questionable Z remeshing. Now if you follow me for a while, you might know that I usually like to be very particular about topology, but time constraints and laziness give me other ideas. The character is basically in pose anyway, and by stroke of sheer luck, the vert count matched up with the head for an easy bridge. For the cloak, which isn't really a cloak, but I don't know what else to call it, so we'll call it a cloak, I inserted a cylinder primitive and deleted the top and bottom along with the front polygons. I then used the modeler to delete most of the edge loops to make it really low poly to start placing it about the model. Looking back, there's definitely more efficient ways of doing this, but it got the job done. Here I'm tentatively experimenting with the hair, but I've still no idea how I'm going to fathom the final shape yet. I decided to extract these shapes out as separate meshes to make them easier to control, and eventually I'll merge them back into the main mesh. For this hair strand at the front, I first use a curve in Blender which allows a lot of control over this complex twisting shape, before converting it to geometry and sending it back to Zebra for editing. 
Eventually we start to get a shape like this and I realise that I'm really pacing through the sculpt now because otherwise this video would be hours long. But don't forget you can check out the real time videos at twitch.tv forward slash dannymat3d. To create the ribbon, I started with a ring 3D and set it to a really low poly in the initialize settings. I then shaped it to be one half of a ribbon before using mirror and weld to double it over. I feel like I want to add some poly paint to the skin now, so I first give the anatomy a once over. I'll revisit the anatomy a couple of times before the end, but I'll always remember to turn the poly paint off when doing so. I start by adding a slight red to the cheeks, nose and chin. Emphasis on the word slight. Start with your skin tone and push it a little towards red. This usually looks better than diving straight in with a flat red colour. Now the same is usually true for lips, but in this case the character has dark red lipstick. Now, I'm actually quite happy with how the skin is looking already, and I don't want to overwork it, so I'll leave it as it is. And we can experiment with the skin more in Blender later. For now, I'll just use Blender to create the tie coming from the ribbon. I used the hair curve from earlier for this as it makes twisting the mesh really easy. And again I convert it to geometry and send it over to ZBrush for tweaking. Then I briefly jump back to the poly paint and give her a bit of eye makeup. And now it's time for that fish. I insert some geometry and initialize a Q sphere. Using the gizmo and move brush I squash the sphere into shape. I then duplicate the sphere to make the fin and tail shapes which are obviously very stylized. And for the eye I just poly painted one on. I could spend a lot longer making this look pretty, but with my self-imposed deadline looming, I decide that this would have to be good enough, a decision I've always been terrible at making. Eventually I dynamesh it all together and take it over to Blender to retopologize it. I don't really need to retopologize it, but it will only take a minute and having edge loops around the parts that stick out will afford me a lot of control. I noticed from the reference that the choker holds a little shell. So to create this, I inserted a plane and masked out the first shape. I then extracted the shape and remeshed it. Then I duplicated it and mirrored to create the complete shape like so. I initialize a Q sphere and create some splashes coming from the hair before progressing with the hair shape a little bit more. I figure now is a good time to start creating our scene in Blender to see how this thing is looking. In case you weren't aware, I use an add-on called GoB to automatically send models between ZBrush and Blender, and I'll leave a link to where you can find the latest version in the description below. Just now you saw me adding a vertex colour node into each material to bring our poly paint data from ZBrush, and now I'm adding a HDRI for global lighting. Now by itself this makes the model look very flat, so I add in a temporary key light to fix that. Now while this fish is very basic, I don't like how uniform the specular is, so I add a noise texture node into the roughness. Next I add a camera and set the focal length to 85mm, which is what I use in ZBrush. Eventually I dial this down though to around 50 for this model. Now at this point I went back into ZBrush and started detailing out the hair splashes, but unfortunately I forgot to press record, but again the whole thing was live streamed over at Twitch if you want to see how I did it. Basically I ended up extracting lots of individual pieces of geometry and pushing them around for a very long time until they started to feel right. There were no special tricks involved, just a very long tedious process of trying to understand how it's supposed to look from all angles. This is quite easily the most complicated hairstyle I've ever attempted and eventually these separate pieces will get dynameshed together to form one big piece. Well actually more like three or four big pieces. In the meantime, I think it's time we painted the cloak that isn't a cloak. The clay shapes were simply painted directly with poly paint. To create the strokes, I used Lazy Mouse and then came back in and manually added variation to the stroke weight. For the stars, I figured it would be easier to create an alpha, so I opened up Photoshop and gave the symmetry tools a try. I created three different alphas, two star shapes and a stardust type thing. When I save out the images and import them as alphas in ZBrush, I can set my stroke type to drag and stamp them at varying sizes across the cloak that isn't a cloak. I then repeat this process for each alpha. Now back in Blender I feel like the hair is missing something, so I start experimenting by adding in hair strands the way I usually do. The hair starts to feel like it has directionality to it and I'm really liking the effect. Next I pose the ribbon which almost looks like it's underwater in the concept. Now unfortunately there were two more live streams after this point and both of which the recordings failed and by which I mean I failed to press record. 
mean, to be honest, it was mostly just a couple of hours making very minor tweets that probably weren't that noticeable in the final piece anyway. But if you want to see it, again, it's all over at twitch.tv forward slash DannyMark3D. If you've made it this far, then well done. I hope you've managed to learn something new and I would love to hear any comments you have below. If you want to help, please like this video and subscribe. And don't forget the next level base meshes are available for this piece at my Gumroad store, link below, along with a bunch of other stuff that I sell there, which are all meant to help you level up your art. Have fun sculpting. Peace.